Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be learning about the morphological keys of some important plant pathogenic fungi. So all the diagrams in this PowerPoint are handmade for better understanding. So this presentation, it is broadly divided into two parts. So the one is asexual spores and the next one is sexual spores. So firstly, under the domain Eukarya, we have three kingdoms. So that is protozoa, chromista and then fungi. So in case of protozoa, they produce the motile asexual spores. They are generally elliptical, hyaline, epically biflagellate and single cell. So for example, Plasmodiophora brassicae. So that causes club root of crucifers. So next coming to chromista. So here we have the pathogens that cause some important diseases like uh, damping off, late blight, white blister and downy mildew. So these chromistans, they are also known as water molds or staminopiles because they mostly uh, cause disease under like more water stagnated condition. And in case of chromista, we should remember something. So under the asexual stage, under the asexual reproduction, they used to produce the sac like structure. It is called as the sporangium. And this sporangium, it contains plenty of asexual spores. So they are known as sporangiospores. So if these sporangiospores, they are motile in nature, they are known as planospores or zoospores. Suppose if they are non-motile in nature, they are known as aplanospores. So sporangiospores is a general terminology. And then the sporangium is born over a stalk-like structure. So it is called a sporangiophore. So we should remember these two terms when we are talking about chromista. That is sporangium as well as sporangiophore and as well as sporangiospores as well. PM causes damping of disease. Uh, there are several species in case of Pythium. So Pythium afanidermatum, Pythium debarianum and Pythium monospermum. So all of them, the sporangiophore, they are hyaline, unbranched and aseptic. And these sporangiophore, they resemble as that of a hyphae. And regarding the shape of the sporangium, so it depends on the different species. For example, in case of Pythium debarianum, it is globose. In case of Pythium afanidermatum, it is lobe. And in case of Pythium monospermum, it is filiform. And next coming to Phytophthora infestans, so this causes late blight disease in case of potato. Here the sporangiophore is hyaline, branched and it is indeterminate. And you can also see some kind of swelling in the sporangiophore where it is getting branched. So it is a typical characteristic of Phytophthora infestans sporangiophore. Regarding the sporangium, they are hyaline, pear or lemon shape with a characteristic papillae that is the thickening of the apex. Okay. Albigo species so albigo species they cause white blister disease in case of the crucifers as well as amaranthus here the sporangiophore is hyaline club shaped and unbranched the sporangium they are hyaline broadly ellipsoidal and produced in chain so here you have to uh, make sure uh, so here you have to understand that this is the only pathogen that comes under chromista that is producing the sporangium in chain so it is a unique distinctive morphological character. Then coming to the downy mildew pathogens, Peronosclerospora sorghi causes downy mildew in case of maize and sorghum. Sclerospora gramnicola causes downy mildew in case of pearl millet. So both of them share the same morphological characteristic in case of the asexual stage. So the sporangiophore is hyaline, upright, short, stout, branched and it is having a pointed tip. And sporangium is hyaline and elliptical and nearly globose. Peronospora parasitica is known to cause downy mildew in case of onion, as well as Peronospora manchurica that causes downy mildew in case of soybean. Pseudoperonospora cubensi they cause downy mildew in case of cucurbits. So both of them share the same morphological characteristic. The sporangiophore is hyaline, dichotomously branched, and it will have a pointed tip. The sporangium is hyaline elliptical and nearly globose. Then Plasmopara viticola, this causes downy mildew in case of grape wine. Here the sporangiophore is hyaline, right angle branched and it will have an obtuse tip. So contrastingly here the tip will be blunt in nature. In case of sporangium they are hyaline, elliptical and nearly globose. Bremia lactuke, so this causes downy mildew in case of radish. Here the sporangiophore is hyaline, dichotomously branched similar to that of Pernospora as well as Pseudopernospora but distinctively here they have a cup or disc shaped apophysis in the tip. It will have four to six pegs so where the sporangium is uh, born. Sporangium is hyaline, elliptical or nearly globose in nature. So that's all about the chromistan pathogen. So now coming to the kingdom fungi. 
So under kingdom fungi, we have five important phylums. So that is Chytridiomycota, Blastocladiomycota, Zygomycota, Ascomycota, and Basidiomycota. So here we'll be just dealing with three important phylums that is Zygomycota, Ascomycota, and Basidiomycota. So first coming to Zygomycota, we have only one pathogen coming under Zygomycota. So Zygomycota, so here also like the pathogen is known to produce the sporangium as well as the sporangiospores. But contrastingly, in case of chromistans, they are known to have the produce the sporangiospores that are motile in nature. But in case of Zygomycota, they produce the sporangiospores, but they are non-motile in nature. So coming to Rhizophus artocarpi, so this causes jackfruit rot. So here the sporangiophore is brown unbranched and they arise in single or in groups just above the rhizoids and uh, the sporangium they are dark brown globose and columellate so they have the columella and uh, inside the sporangium they will produce a lot of spherical single cell brown in color sporangiospores the sporangiospores are non-motile so they are also known as aplanospores so that's all about zygomycota so next coming to ascomycota Ascomycota is one of the biggest phylum under the kingdom fungi. It encompasses a lot of different genera and species of fungi. So here the asexual stage they will produce the spores. So here the asexual spores are regarded as conidia and the stalk like structure is called as conidiophore. So the first pathogen Cercospora. Here the conidiophore they are darkly pigment pigmented, multiceptate and they are geniculate in type and produced in cluster geniculate type in the sense it will have sharp bends similar to that of the knees okay and in case of conidia they may be hyaline or sometimes olivaceous or olive green in color and then they are long slender and cat tail like or needle shape and multiceptate in nature then bipolar is orizae this causes rice brown spot so here the conidia 4 it is dark brown multiceptate geniculate type and then it is produced in cluster the conidia they are brown cylindrical slightly curved and multiceptate alternaria species so they are known to cause a, a lot of a blight disease in case of agricultural as well as horticultural crops so similarly here also the conidia 4 is dark brown multiceptate geniculate type and produced in cluster so the conidia they are brown bottle shaped muriform beak and it will be produced in chains so muriform in the sense it is just like the arrangement of the bricks so it will have both horizontal as well as vertical septation so it will look like the bricks are arranged one over the other so that it will have both the horizontal and vertical septation so that is called as muriform nature so next carmularia carmularia also causes leaf spots similar to that of cercospora so here the conidia 4 is of same type dark brown multiceptate geniculate type and produced in cluster the conidia they are brown and the shape is they are curved, lunate or boat shape and multiceptate. Then coming to pathogens, Ascochyta rabiae that causes Ascochyta blight in case of chickpea, Pillostichta musara that causes freckle leaf spot of banana, Lazio diplodia theobromae that causes dieback as well as fruit rot in case of several horticultural crops. So all these pathogens they are known to produce the asexual fruiting body called Pycnidia. So Pycnidia it is a flask shaped asexual fruiting body. So in the base of the Pycnidia, the conidiophore will be basally arranged and the, they will be hyaline, unbranched and club shaped. Just above the conidiophore, they will, there will be conidia. So the conidia is also known as pycnidiospore since it is produced inside the Pycnidia. So the conidia, they are hyaline. Sometimes it may be colored depending on the different genus and species. And they may be elliptical and single celled or bicelled depending on different genus and species. So here we have some examples. In case of Ascochyta rabiae, the conidia are elliptical hyaline single cell. In case of Lassio diplodia theobromae, they are brown in color, bicelled. And in case of uh, Philostichta musarum, they are single cell, hyaline, but it will have an uh, epical appendage and it is covered in a mucilage. So these are some different types of conidia and different types of spores uh, uh, produced by different pathogens. But however, all of them, they are known to produce the pycnidia. Water at a scenario. So this is a post harvest pathogen. Uh, mostly it is known to cause uh, gray mold as well as blossom blight. Gray mold in case of fruits and blossom blight in case of the flowers. So here the conidia 4 is dark brown, multiceptate and well branched. And the conidia they are light brown, ellipsoidal or subspherical, single cell and produced in a cluster. So that will resemble that of a grape bunch. Then coming to the powdery mildew pathogen, oidium species. 
So here the conidia four is hyaline, short, single cell, and branched. And the conidia they are hyaline, elliptical or barrel shaped, single cell, and produced in chains. In case of oidiopsis, so the conidia four is hyaline, slender, long, multicepted, and unbranched. So contrastingly, in case of oidium, it is single cell, but in case of oidiopsis, the conidia four is multicepted. And in case of the conidia, here in case of oidiopsis, it is hyaline, clavate or diamond shaped single cell. And only one conidia is produced in the tip of the conidia fold. So this is also contrasting when compared to the oidium. So in case of oidium, the conidia will be elliptical or barrel shaped. Here it is diamond shaped. In case of oidium, it will be produced in chains. But here in case of oidiopsis, it is produced in single. So now coming to ovalariopsis. So this is another type of powdery mildew. Pathogen. So here the conidia four are hyaline, long, slender, and multicepted, similar to that of oidiopsis, but here it is branched. In case of oidiopsis, it is unbranched. So that is one of the striking difference between oidiopsis as well as ovalariopsis. So here the conidia is hyaline, clavate or diamond shape, and single cell and produced in single cell, similar to that of oidiopsis. So next coming to aspergillus. So this causes mold disease. Here, the conidia 4 is hyaline, unbranched, and multicepted, and it contains the vesicle as well as the phyllites and metulae. So, from the metulae, the conidia are produced. So, the conidia are hyaline, spherical, single celled, and produced in chains. Sometimes the conidia color changes, like uh, differs uh, to specific genus and species. Uh, it, may, it might be black in color in case of Aspergillus niger, or it may be green or blue, de depending on the different species. Uh, then coming to penicillium species, so this also causes mold disease, more or less similar to that of Aspergillus, but here the striking difference is they do not have a vesicle. So here the conidia 4 is hyaline, branched, multicepted, and it never produces vesicle. It will be branched in case of penicillium and single in case of Aspergillus. So here it is branched and then it will directly produce the phyllides and metulae. From the metulae, the conidia are produced. So conidia are of same as that of the aspergillus. So it may be colored or hyaline. It is spherical, single cell and produced in chain. Next coming to physarium. So this causes built disease. So it is also known to produce the asexual footing body sporodochium. Sporodochium is a cushion like asexual footing body. So here the conidia 4 are hyaline, branched, multicepted. Here they will produce both macroconidia as well as microconidia. So the macroconidia they are hyaline, fusiform or sickle shaped or crescent shaped and they are multicepted in nature. Microconidia they are hyaline, elliptical and single cell. Chlamydospore, they are swollen hyphal cells. It may be intercalary or terminal. It may be produced in single or in chains. Coming to Pestalociopsis, it is known to cause gray blight disease in a variety of horticultural crops. So here the conidia is spindle shaped, five cell, where the middle three cells are dark brown in color and the periphery cells will be hyaline. And it will also have some bristle like structures in both the ends. Regarding colitotrichum, it is known to cause leaf spot as well as dieback as well as fruit rot or anthracnose. So it is known to produce the asexual footing body Asorulae. Asorulae is the sunken saucer shaped structure. Sometimes it may have setae and sometimes setae may be absent depending on the uh, like uh, the different species and also sometimes pH also plays a major role. So sometimes the environmental factors also play a major role in the production of setae. So here the conidia 4, they are hyaline, club shaped, unbranched and single cell over which the conidia are produced. So conidia are hyaline, it may be spherical or single uh, sickle shaped depending on different species and it is always single cell. So for example, in case of colitotrichum capsici that causes dieback in case of chili and colitotrichum falcatum that causes red rot of sugarcane. So they produce the sickle shaped hyaline single cell conidia. In case of colitotrichum muse that causes anthracnose of banana colitotrichum glosporiates that causes anthracnose of mango and colitotrichum lindimuthianum that causes anthracnose of bean they will produce elliptical hyaline single celled conidia pyricularia arise so this is known to cause rice blast disease so here the conidia 4 are hyaline branched multicepted and solitary solitary in the sense it will be separate it is it may be produced in groups but it will be separate arising from the hydrate so here the conidia they are hyaline or olive green in color and they are pyriform or pear shaped and mostly three cell sometimes it may be two cell. So 
So that's all about the ascomycota pathogen. So now coming to basidiomycota. So the phylum basidiomycota under kingdom fungi, it covers mostly the pathogens like uh, uh, rust pathogen, smut pathogen, as well as some root rot pathogens uh, that are coming under uh, basidiomycota. So Pacinia gramnus variety tritisi. So it is known to cause black stem rust of wheat. So this is the erudosaurus. So here we can see the erudospores that are pedicellate in nature. So the erudospore is reddish brown, pedicellate, subglobos are ellipsoidal in shape, single cell and they are echinolate. So they will have some spine like structure in the surface. And this is the teleosaurus of Pacinia gramnus variety tritisi. So the teleospore they are dark brown, pedicellate, pointed tip and bicell. Hemilia vastatrix, it is known to cause coffee rust. So here the iridospores are yellow or orange in color and it will be lemon segment like in shape and they are single celled and they are echinolate and half smooth. So only one half of these spores will be echinolate and the other half will be smooth. And these uh, uh, iridospores, they are arising through the uh, stomata in the lower surface of the leaf. So if we just observe this under the stereozoom microscope, it will look like a bouquet. So it is the suprastomatal bokeh like saurus. So that is the uh, most important uh, striking feature of this pathogen. So then coming to Ustilago species that causes uh, smut disease. So Ustilago nuda tritisi that causes loose smut of wheat and Ustilago maidis that causes uh, head smut in case of maize. So these are the teleospores. They are dark brown or black in color, spherical and single cell. And strikingly some difference between Ustilago nuda tritisi and maidis is in case of Ustilago nuda tritisi, they are smooth walled. In case of Ustilago maidis, they are having some kind of spine like structure. So it is a rough wall. So that's all about the asexual spores. So now coming to the sexual spores. So as we already discussed, the domain Eukarya is having three kingdoms that is Protozoa, Chromista and Fungi. So under the kingdom Chromista, we have the phylum Oomycota. So the pathogen that comes under Oomycota, they produce the sexual spores. They are ca called as Oo spores. So O means egg. So it is like a shape of the egg. So this sexual spore of Oomycota is called as Oo spore. So these Oo spores, they are golden yellow or golden brown in color, spherical, double walled structure. So the sexual spores produced by Zygomycota under the kingdom fungi are known as zygospores. So the zygospores are dark brown, spherical and thick wall with a warty surface and it is always attached with tongue like dispensers in the bodhi sites. And the sexual spores produced by ascomycota are called as ascospores. So these ascospores, it may be hyaline or colored, it may be elliptical or fusiform or pulley wheel like, it may be single celled or multi cell and mostly eight ascospores will be present in one ascus. So it is of different types that, that depends on the different genera. So for example, if you take, so for example, if you take sclerotinia sclerosurum, they are hyaline, elliptical and single cell. And for example, if you take Magnaporte grisiae that causes rice blast, so they are hyaline, fusiform and multiceptate. And uh, for example, if you take uh, Taloromyces and Eupenicillium, they are fully wheel like structure. So these are uh, like different types of uh, ascospores produced by different uh, pathogens coming under ascomycota. So mostly there will be eight ascospores inside an ascus. So coming to basidiospores, they are the sexual spores of basidiomycota. So basidium, it is a club shaped structure with two or four sterigmata, so over which the basidiospores are born. So the basidiospores, it may be hyaline or colored and they are elliptical and single cell. So thanks for your kind attention. If you have any queries, you can contact me through my email.